let's go jump right into it. Um, oh, reminder, these are recorded for those of you that aren't on Twitch with us live right now. Uh, they'll be all recorded and posted up to YouTube later, so just remember as you talk about things. All right, agenda for today. Uh, we had a security vulnerability reported to us at FireGiant in DTF, so we're going to talk about that today and the fix and how we roll that fix out to uh, everywhere in Wix kind of stuff. Now we'll do that first, and then we'll do triage, um, even though talking about the DTF security vulnerability will probably drop us mostly into triage or something like that. And then, as always, we'll do question, comments, other things people want to talk about. So let's talk about the thing that's, uh, I guess, exciting, kind of annoying, but yeah. Um, DTF has the ability to decompress uh, cabinets and zip files. Um, and someone reported to us that it is vulnerable to the zip slip attack vector. The zip slip basically says create a cabinet, let's say an archive, where you have relative paths uh, or traversal paths as the file name. So something like dot dot whack dot dot whack foo dot dll or whatever. And then when the code attempts to uh, extract that, it will extract it and then move that path to wherever you want to go. So this case I shown here, the idea being that you're like, hey, let's extract this cab to you know my temp drive. And inside it, it has dot, 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 all the way up to the root of your directory or beyond. And the, um, most of the C-sharp code and things like that will very nicely just push you to the root. And then you'd like go Windows to there too and let me try to replace kernel32.dl. Now, you have to be elevated to replace these, stuff like that. But it's still an attack vector trying to place files where you would not expect them to go from a cabinet. Um, it also works if the paths in the cabinet or in the archive are rooted, right? So you I, could do just a plain backslash Windows System32. I think... You can. I haven't. I'm not sure that I wasn't oh, able okay. to create one that way. You may just need a different tool than I was using. Right. Um, right. But the yeah the the net result is trying to place a file that should be relative to where you're saying to decompress these things way far away. Um, and so we have a whip for this. Uh, 6075 that we will talk about when we do triage, I think. And then um, because there is already a fix. So honestly, we'll go through all the triage stuff since it's over on the, the bug side uh, later. It's a very small change to DTF, uh, but the size doesn't matter. We basically have to release everything because in Wix 3, DTF is part of Wix, and therefore we have to release the whole kit and caboodle to get a new, Wix, new DTF out. In Wix 4, that hopefully will no longer be a problem. Um, but let's talk about Wix 3, because that's the thing. Uh, clearly, this will go into Wix 3.14, because that's the straightforward place to put it. I believe that we need to do a Wix 3.11.2 release, because 3.14 is not a place where people are expected to move to yet. So it's not like a stable production release. So we need a stable production release, which would be 3.11.2, because uh, we already have a 3.11.1 due to the burn fixes that we took. And I think the only real question mark in my mind is whether we need a 3.10.5. We have a 3.10.4 for people that were not a, prepared to move to 3.11 way back when, I think. But at this point, you really probably should just move to 3.11, all things considered. So is it enough to just do a 3.11.2 release for the wide the wide um, distribution fix is kind of my question yes <laughs> bob's like yes uh sean did you have any opinions <laughs> um i wish jacob yeah i don't think we need another 310 yeah another 310 all right good because it's I don't really want it. It's just hassle and hassle. So um, we'll we'll look at the fix um, and uh, we'll get the release out honestly as quickly as possible. There's just no point in holding on to it. Um, and as we'll see in the code, it's not terribly exciting or difficult or anything like that. So that's what I'm talking about, the DTF security vulnerability. If you want to read more about it, you can go get the whip. Um, we'll look at the... Uh, the issue that was open for this as well, so we can kind of go through it. But uh, anyway, moving on, let's go do triage. You ready, Bob? Uh, yes, switching topics. 
switching topics. Well, sort of. Um, we're starting at the top here. Hey, look, my mouse doesn't show up on this. Oh, there it is. Okay, weird. Okay. Um, this said, thanks. I set the cannot. Yeah, I set the verbose logging. Cannot see the problem. Can we have this open for a few more days? If it's not, I will close the ticket. That was ten days ago. Um, one more session, or do we just close it now? Saying, hey, hopefully everything's good. Um, yeah, let's just close it now. All right, awesome. Burn HTTP to HTTPS. Uh, redirects failed to download when IE is configured. This pull request was accepted today and merged. We just need one against Wix 4, because I'm pretty sure this one was against 3. Um, so we just need the thing against 4, and then we can close this issue. Let's volunteer Jacob. Yeah, so I agree. Not here. So let's assign Jacob, and we can put this in burn, and I think it will go off. But anyone that hasn't been around for a little bit, this is essentially if you set your policy in IE to warn, I think, about switching from HTTP to HTTPS, then burn fails because it doesn't have a UI to show you when the error, or the, the API returns an error. So all this does is set a bit to say, yeah, no, that's okay. Go ahead and just go from HTTP to HTTPS. Why that would be a problem is a mystery to me. Like, I don't know why that would ever have been an issue in IE. The other way around, I could understand, going from sure. a secure to less secure, but going from a less secure to a more secure, I don't get it. So anyway, uh, Burn will respect that, and that will make life better when you're connecting to AWS or wherever it was that they were switching to um, and not actually accessing HPS all the way. Um, and here is the issue opened by FireGiant for the... Um, uh, the zip slip uh, attack vector. And from here, if you look at this issue, you can see the whip, which I guess I already have open, that can talk about it and um, what the fix is. And I should have, oh, I forgot to open this. The fix is this, essentially. You expand the full path of where you're going to extract to. If you didn't specify it's the current directory, you extract the full path of what your directory would have been, plus the file path that you're getting from the archive into a path, and then you make sure that this new path starts with the base path, uh, essentially saying that this file ended up inside the base path directory. And the important part here is that we use all of the .NET Framework APIs to expand these paths. I had one implementation of this that I wrote that was trying to do string comparisons and then history came back to me and said, no, don't do string comparisons on paths. Let the system take care of it for you. So anyway, uh, there is the the comparisons. It's really straightforward, um, and it catches the things that you expect, you know, backslashes, slashes. Um, I wrote fully, I hacked in fully paths and everything like that. So anyway, small fix. Um, and uh, this is a breaking change if people were expecting this to work inside DTF, which seems kind of scary if you were depending on this behavior. It's worth calling out, but... It is yeah. called out in the um, <laughs> uh, web. Yeah. And also called out is that there are still methods in DTF that will decompress to memory. Oh, I better scroll down here. I can see it. You guys can't. There we go. Um, this right here. There's a breaking change disk. There's still APIs in DTF that will decompress to memory. They're not insecure because they were never using the file name to begin with. Um, so if someone still wants the ability to write file names that have relative paths in them, weird pathing things, and wants it, they can use the memory-based DTF things to re-implement bad behavior if they want. Right. I don't know why okay. anybody would want this behavior, um, but you can still do it using the in-memory versions. But DTF by itself will not now unpack to a bad location the way this code would have in the past. Cool. <sighs> Yay. All righty. I think that's all of our issues for a day this week. That's actually pretty nice. Um, this this whole security things are always just kind of a hassle and suck up a bunch of time and effort. But 
have to do them. We're being responsible, <laughs> responsible adults in the system. So that's, I think, what we got for this week. Anything else people want to talk about? Stuff going on. Uh, do we? You, you mentioned vaguely not wanting to hold this release for the GTFX. Yep. Are you proposing dates? Uh, well, I'm. I'll get the three fourteen thing out. We'll we'll take that change now-ish. Get that build out tomorrow. Um, we could point people to it. I I don't if, I don't know who's going to test it really. Um, certainly a three fourteen build. So I think we just go with three eleven two and go. Here it is. Um, we have a new. Wix version out for those of you that need a security fix for DTF if you're using it to decompress archives. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's, that. I don't know if there's any reason to delay at this point, which means it's purely a, a matter of pushing the system along, you know. So tomorrow, weekend, Monday, Tuesday, kind of thing, as soon as it kind of gets pushed along. Okay. All right. It's kind of weird not having Jacob. Jacob usually has, you know, a plus one or whatever from the peanut gallery. Um, but whatever. All right. Uh, anything else people want to talk about? Stuff you guys got going on? I know Eric's here saying that he's making progress on his Com Plus thing, so um, it's good there. Otherwise, a an exciting week for Fire Giant, I guess, in Wix. A less exciting week for everybody else. Um, pretty quiet otherwise. Not a lot of new issues, not a lot of new things going on. Um, I guess Jacob got some work done with that HTTP HPS thing. Yeah, that was a nice one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's what we got today. Uh, we'll leave off here, pick up again in two weeks, I think. Two weeks is a thing. Uh, the 26th of September. Seems like it should be normal. Uh, we should have all the builds out. We'll see if anybody says anything about 3.11.2. I expect to be quite muted and not terribly interesting. So I guess until that time, uh, you guys take it easy. Two weeks from now, we'll have a 3.11.2. We'll have a 3.14 build out. No 3.10 build. And uh, people can enjoy new, safer decompression code if they're using that. So two weeks later. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.